Hi everyone. So uh, if you don't know, I was at the back there. My name is Niall Dawson. I'm from North Road. Um, let me get our presentation up. Right. Yeah. So Niall Dawson. I'm from North Road. We've also got Nathan from uh, from Tech One here, Nathan Woodrow, uh, who you probably have come across on Twitter or on the mailing list or on GIS Stack Exchange or one of those other numerous sources that um, we all like to hit up. We're here today to give you a bit of a talk about what's coming up in QGIS 3.0. Um, so in case you're not following the project too closely, the current supported major version is uh, QGIS 2.18. We've been on this QGIS 2.18. X track for five years, long time, um, <laughs> and uh, it's really exciting. So this new version, it's not out yet, it'll be out very soon. Version 3.0, it's been in development for I think about the last two years. We've been working on it side by side alongside the QGIS uh, 2.18, the, the regular releases. Um, and it's had a lot of development going to there, a lot of features. A lot of bug fixes, a lot of just uh, cleanups and code improvements and optimizations and all this sort of stuff. I should have said at the very start, so as a bit of background, uh, myself and Nathan are both QGIS developers. So we, um, QGIS being an open source project means that we have the rights to, to go in there and edit the code. So that's what uh, a large part of Nathan and my job is, is actually going in there, making changes to QGIS, making uh, bug fixes, making the software better, hopefully. Um, so we've been quite involved in this, this lead up to 3.0, and we'd like to just give you a bit of a taste about what's coming. The, the little disclaimer we've got here, we don't really want this to be a, a what's new in 3.0 talk, because if you, if you imagine the amount of changes that, or the new features that went in between version 2.16 and 2.18 was, was quite huge. Um, if you can imagine that kind of multiplied by 10, by 20, by 30, that's sort of the amount of new features that are coming your way in QGIS 3.0. So way too much stuff for us to cover in depth here. So instead, we're going to focus on things that will change what you do day to day. Um, so things that are, are different, that behave differently, that are slightly um, uh, you know, reworked, so that when you sit down, you start up QGIS 3.0 for the first time, this is stuff that you need to know to be able to get up to speed and going as quickly as possible. We're not going to touch all the, the cool, new, shiny stuff. Or maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. <laughs> right. And I'm also going to be doing some live demos here. So QGIS 3.0, not released yet. Beta software, please don't crash on us uh, in a live demo. <laughs> it's, it's, it's guaranteed to be the time that it would crash is when we're in front of you <laughs> <laughs> presenting. Right, the first thing I want to show you is um, one of the big things we've been doing in version 3.0 is moving a lot of tasks from being things that block the workflow to happening in the background. So if you're running QGIS 2.18, for instance, uh, there's a lot of tasks that you do and you have to sit there and wait. You, know, you go and you, you click on a few buttons and then you sit and you wait while the progress bar uh, or you know, progress bar slowly kind of churns away across the screen if you're lucky. If you're, if you're unlucky, you'll just sit there and you'll get an hourglass for an indeterminate amount of time. Uh, that's a pain. Nobody likes that. So we've been trying to move as much stuff as possible into the background so you can keep on doing your work while this processing kind of churns away, um, thinking away in the background. Let's do a live demo because that's the most exciting way to show that. Uh, right. Here we go. QGIS 3.0. No. <laughs> Nathan, you were supposed to set this up for me. Let's try this. Yep. Right, QGIS 3.0. There we go. That's, it looks much the same. When we, when we started up, it's not uh, a dramatic rework of the user interface or anything like that. There's no ribbon toolbar or uh, totally reworked interface. Um, so all the stuff that you're kind of used to seeing is generally in the same sort of place, hopefully. But let's, I'd like to demo first off this, this background feature that we've got going. So if I have this layer loaded, uh, which is kind of not too heavy, but it's, there's a few features in there, and I go to save this layer, so save as. I'll just put this somewhere. So 
So in QGIS, 3, in QGIS 2, if I clicked OK, I would get an hourglass and QGIS would basically sort of sit there and pause while it thinks in the background and saves all these features out. Uh, if you had a couple of million features in that layer, it's a bit of a pain to sit there and wait, especially if you're kind of saving it over a, a slow network. Um, in the next version, when I click OK, you, you actually won't see anything happen. It just disappears. But if you had super eyesight, let me do that again. Watch down here in the, down in this area, in the status bar. You see this little progress bar? It quickly churns away there. Um, if I had a larger layer, which on this USB stick I do, it'll be a bit more impressive. But what this lets us do, oops. Is, is keep working in the program while, that thing, while the saving operation happens in the background. Uh, but for the first time when you do that in QGIS 3.0, you might think it's not working. There's no um, hourglass sitting there or message that says, you know, saving happened okay. It's all happening in the background while you do other stuff. Um, and when it's finished, you'll get the, the layer will load into your project. I'll just leave that large data set there. <laughs> um, that, a whole bunch of different areas of QGIS have been upgraded to this. So that layer save is one. If you save a raster layer is another one that happens in the background now. Um, a big part of it is also a lot of these processing tools. If I, for instance, do a buffer on this layer, uh, so this one, that actually is happening in the background now. So it's, it's responsive, I can cancel it and it doesn't hang my QGIS like QGIS 2.0 would. If you try to cancel that, you sit there and uh, if you're lucky, it will respond. Um, and I can actually just close this window and keep working while that, that operation is thinking away in the background. You can see here that, oh, well, there we go, uh, a bug in QGIS 3.0 because <laughs> it's a live demo. Uh, and it lets me keep on working while it's doing that lengthy processing in the background. So that's a, that's a huge difference from 2.0. That's a new feature that we've snuck into this, this presentation, but under the guise of being changed workflow. Um, when you look at it, so, so the saving operations, actually saving map renders is also done in the background now, so you can keep doing other stuff while that's thinking. Um, processing algorithm, uh, a few other things have been moved to that. We're going to move more and more stuff to that in future releases coming up. So, if you, if you have pain points where you click on a whole lot of buttons and it sits there and thinks, let us know because we'll try and push that into the background so you can keep working while that, that happens. Okay, another change that's quite a large one in terms of how QGIS actually functions is in terms of what's called uh, on-the-fly reprojection. So in QGIS 2.18, um, you, there was a setting in project properties that, actually, have you got, can I fire up 2.18 here, Nathan? QGIS 3.0 starts up faster too. That's, that's another big news. <laughs> Um, so, so in version 2.18, there was this setting for on-the-fly projection, and it was a little bit confusing because it was kind of worded as though it would only apply to what you see on the map. But behind the scenes, it was actually changing a whole lot of things in terms of how areas were calculated, how distances were calculated in the project, whether or not ellipsoid calculations would be used for these things. Um, we've simplified all that, and we've made it a lot more flexible in 3.0. That project might not work. Um, so in 2.18, it's this, this button here at the top, enable on the fly coordinate, CRS transformation. Um, the strange thing is if I switch that off, it, it, it's actually doing a whole lot more than that. It's changing this, this distance calculation and the ellipsoid um, measurement and all this sort of stuff. People kept getting confused by that and it was just not a nice, not a nice uh, user interface at all. So in 3.0, that has been changed and now it's all done with this option so basically, a project, 
always have this on-the-fly reprojection. If you have layers loaded and they're in different coordinate systems, it'll always transparently in the background reproject them so they all match up and they're, they're where they should be. Sometimes, though, people want projects where there's no projection associated with them. So it might be something like it's not actually a, a real-world project. It might be like a local coordinate system. It might be um, a different planet. Uh, it could be just a, a totally made-up map where you don't actually care about ground coordinates and that sort of stuff. The way QGIS free handles that is this new option up the top here that says no projection. And if I switch that on, it's basically saying to QGIS, treat every coordinate as it is. It's just that, that number that it's stored as, if it's 148, then that's what it is. If it's uh, 6 million, like a zone 56, 6 million, whatever, um, that's where I want that point put on the map. Um, so if I loaded in then a whole bunch of layers in different coordinate systems, they'll appear in totally different places on the, on the map. Uh, but the other thing that does now is just to make it clear, when you turn off, turn your project to no projection mode, every measurement you do is just planar. It's just a Cartesian measurement based on what those two numbers are. Um, and you'll see it most noticeably. If I make a measurement, I actually don't even get a choice of unit here when I've got no projection. These numbers are just... They, they may have no real world meaning at all, so we don't try and be smart and turn them into meters and this sort of stuff and give you really wildly inaccurate results. Um, not the most exciting change, but it, it does actually make things a whole lot easier to explain to people. That you, you set your projection for your project and you're guaranteed your measurements will be correct and everything will line up, unless your data's messy. Uh, another thing that we've done, perhaps not the most exciting, but it could be a big difference to your workflow, is in QGIS 2, there was a whole bunch of these things called core plugins. So if I look in the plugins menu up here, um, in a stock install you get from the, the website and you download, you have a lot of these plugins that are kind of installed by default, but they're not enabled. So things like the heat map one, these interpolation tools, uh, georeferencer. Um, 2.18 2 had a whole bunch of these ones. The problem with these is that it makes things a bit unpredictable. You can go and you can sit in front of someone else's QGIS and they haven't switched on these same tools um, and they don't have all the same options as you've got on your install. The other thing is these, these plugins in 2.18 they're really isolated. They're, they're kind of like in this weird uh, limbo state where they're not really accessible for the rest of the code base. They, they make their own little menu entries and all this sort of stuff. You can't reuse them in models and processing, all this other stuff. It's siloed away. That really, that really sucked. So in QGIS 3.0, we've basically got rid of a whole lot of these ones, stripped out a whole bunch of ones that we thought people weren't using, and the rest of them we've tried to merge into the rest of QGIS and integrate with the rest of the workflow. So the ones that are affected, most, off, most uh, immediately, one called Oracle Raster, nobody actually even knew what it did, it's gone. <laughs> if you were relying on that one, sorry, um, <laughs> you can use OGR or something else <laughs> to do whatever that plugin was doing. Um, DXF to shape is another one that's been taken out, basically because the OGR tools do that a whole lot better. There's, there's better tools in QGIS and elsewhere available for doing that operation, and that, there was no one maintaining that plugin. Um, so that's gone as well. These ones, a whole bunch of analysis tools, are no longer plugins, but they've all been moved into processing. So heat map, road graph, geometry snapper, the raster terrain analysis things, zonal statistics. Um, they're no longer siloed away. They're now available in that processing toolbox. If I bring it up in, in QGIS 3.0, for instance, if I do a search here for heat map, now the heat map is a processing tool which you can, you can run, you can integrate into your models, you can, other plugins can take advantage of it, and now it's like a first-class citizen instead of being this weird kind of nowhere thing. So all those ones have been moved to processing. A really cool one is like the, the road graph. So now you can have a model that actually does routing and, and network routing, and that is part of that model. I'm going to switch across to Nathan for a little bit now. <clears throat> My turn. So um, Nathan from Technology One. Um, so this, there's been a lot of talk about this for a long time. Um, I think <clears throat> probably since 118. I think people have been trying to push to get a unified ad thing. As you would know, in 218, you got this uh, off, the off the screen slightly, but there's a, a lot of a lot of buttons down the side here for adding different layers. 
um, with, of course, more options, everything. Um, we don't need more toolbars um, or more toolbar buttons. So in three, uh, there was a, a effort to unify it all into a single dialog, which is basically bringing all those menu options into a, a dialog which is consistent pattern with the rest of the dialogs in the project. So it follows the same side panel option as the options dialog and the settings dialog and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's exactly the same, most of the same dialogs from 2.18 just brought into uh, this panel. It will probably will be evolved in future releases to be more unified. The plan is to unify the database connections and WFS and WMS and all that sort of stuff into more, more um, reusable components. But this is sort of a first cut. Um, this this complements the browser panel that we've got. The browser panel has been around for uh, quite a while. Um, it has the same the same stuff in it, um, but it doesn't expose all the options. So sometimes they use the dialog for that. Uh, again, it's one of those unify, unification efforts. Um, so. Uh, uh, I think a big thing in the past is, especially for enterprise deployment style um, or even just normal users, is we used to launch QGIS with, an, with a batch file. Um, it's only a minor change, but it makes things a little bit nicer. We used to launch QGIS with a batch file, but launching with a batch file means you can't pin it nicely to the taskbar. You can, but you have to sort of do a hack, and it's, it's gross. And if you have to explain to someone how to pin something to the taskbar, then I think we failed. So um, if you look at QGIS 3, you've actually look at the shortcut. It's actually, well, not that one, because that's actually a shortcut. Um, it points to a batch file, which does a bunch of stuff to stop the prompt coming up, and it just looks, it's just not good. So in QGIS 3, <coughs> it's actual, an actual XE. So you can pin it, you can pin it to start, you can add parameters to it. It's just a little bit more con uh, consistent with how it should work. Um, where's my presentation gone? Um, the, yeah. the other thing is a crash handler, um, which doesn't have a picture in here, but because we're releasing three um, and it's been developed in such a long time, so many changes, there's potentially, a bit, there's, going be, there's going to be issues with it, um, no doubt. Um, one of those things, especially on Windows, if, if you get a crash, it just bombs out and you, don't, you get nothing. It just, just exits and then you get a Windows crash handler that says, oh, your program failed and then too bad. Um, so I reworked the crashing, so if it crashes, we actually get a uh, crash handler. And I thought I had a picture, but I do not. Um, It'll actually, sh it'll actually dump out a stack trace. So when you install the dev builds of QGIS, you should install the, um, there's a PD PDB package, which is basically the debug symbols, and it runs alongside QGIS. So if it crashes out, it actually pulls the symbols in and loads a stack trace, and it helps finding bugs um, a lot easier, especially if we're not, if we can't reproduce it, we can, we can see a stack trace and hopefully work out where it is. And I think Niles already found two, and I found one the other day with that, so it's already starting to pay off. So if you're running, um, QGIS 3 dev, make sure you keep those symbols updated. It will normally do it for you anyway, so it's okay. So um, moving from two, 2 to 3, we decided to change a bunch of settings, uh, change a bunch of the keys in the settings. The settings became quite messy. There was keys, some uppercase, some lowercase, and different versions of how to spell QGIS. Um, some of the windows were put in, uh, some of the windows um, uh, states were stored in some key and some were stored in other keys. So we tried to unify all that. Um, as part of that, though, your settings didn't translate across. So as soon as you fired up QGIS 3, you had no connections and none of your, none of your uh, color schemes and stuff came across. So we've integrated a, a settings migration step on, on load. So technically, this shouldn't, you don't need to run this. It won't, it will run for you. There is an override flag that you can set that will automatically like force a migration of all the um, settings. It brings across you know, connection strings and colors. There's also the, the auth DB, which has usernames and passwords and stuff. It will bring that across. Uh, it also tries to migrate symbols. It basically just takes a dump of what's in the two symbology and puts it in your three and tags it with a, a QGIS three tag so you can then rearrange it um, if, you, if you need to. As part of that, and this is a side effect of, semi side effect of the setting stuff, is introduce user profiles. So user profiles are a bundled bundled settings. That's don't 218, don't need that. So in, in the settings menu, you've got a user profile menu. In the past, in QGIS 2, we used to have a QGIS 2 folder in your home directory, which had your plugins, uh, expressions, templates, and all that sort of stuff. 
and especially on Windows, all your settings are in the registry. Um, telling people to go into the registry to, to change or remove a key is, um, makes you feel dirty. Um, it's not a good thing to do. Um, also means if you're trying to demo, <coughs> if you're trying to demo, you can't really have profiles per se if you want to switch between things. Um, I quite hand, quite like that concept in Firefox and Ro um, Firefox and Chrome. So brought that into three. So now if you go to my mouse works, if you go into settings user profiles and you click on the demo one, it opens up a whole new profile which is isolated settings and isolated plugins and all that sort of stuff. So if I look at the user profile folder. Profiles. So it's also stored in app data roaming as well, rather than your home directory. Putting stuff in the home directory is a bit of an abuse of the sort of structure you're supposed to follow on Windows. So put it into, ro into roaming, which also means if you're on an um, active domain, uh, on a domain, it will actually sync up to the server um, correctly so you can move around computers. So you can see here you've got a default profile. Everyone will get that um, as when they first start, and that's the only one that will get settings migration. So the others don't get forced to setting migration. Um, default will get it. So if you run three and you get settings pulled across and you don't want that, you can just make a new profile and call it clean or something and run with that. Um, and delete, feel free to delete your, pro, your default profile. Although it will be recreated again next time. If you run it without a profile, it will make a default profile. So if you go into the profile, we've got the cache. Um, we've got um, all the processing models go in here, project templates, uh, all the plugins, all the settings are now in this QGIS folder, and just in a, an INI file. So it's quite easy to, to take that whole profile and move it to another machine if you need to, um, especially helpful for debugging. Um, there's a case that I found two days ago, someone was crashing out, so it's asked for the whole profile folder, pulled it across, turns out it was a, a rogue plugin that was causing an issue. Um, whereas in the past, that was a little bit more tricky to ask for dumping registry keys and stuff out, and um, it's not ideal. Uh, there's, also the, there's also an INI file that tells you which default profile to load up. So when you start the XE, that's the profile that will start up by default. You can also over, override it. Uh, quite a major workflow change is the node tool. Um, in the past, it used to be click and drag. So you have to click, physically click and hold and drag to drop a node. Um, that, had some, that had some workflow restrictions because if you click and drag and you can't do anything else whilst you get the mouse down, unless you're really super skilled at typing and dragging at the same time. Um, so in three, it's been changed to basically click, click, like CAD is. So, this, so you click on a node and you click and where the location goes and it will drag to that spot. You'll see a drag mark as you move your mouse. Um, I'll show you in a second. The advantage of that is you can click something and then you can go and type into the CAD doc, which gives you options to change the angle, change the, um, the distance, the X and the Y, because that node is still active. Um, it also means we can move multiple nodes at once easier and do snapping easier and things like that. So I'll just quickly show that one. All right, so if we got this line here. Where's my node tool? So it now highlights the nodes when you move over it. So previously you'd have to click and drag, whereas this version, if you click it once, and now my mouse is let go, obviously, so I can put it wherever I want and then let go. If you click in the middle of the line, you'll get a new node and you click there. So it makes adding nodes quite easy. There's also the extra little bonus thing, which should show here, a little plus on the end of the line that you can click to extend that line out. Oh, click the wrong thing there. Because in the past that was quite difficult to do. You had to use plugins and extra tools, and it's just not ideal. So now you can extend the line um, uh, like manually like that. There's also the option to select and move nodes from multiple lines at once, basically. As I said, because it integrates with the CAD tools, this is the CAD panel down here. If you've never used it, it's the advanced digitizing panel. Um, I probably should have just called it CAD doc because it would have been easier to say. Oh yeah, true. Yep. So this is the CAD doc down here. Once you turn that on, and my layer disappeared because of that projection thing. You can see down here now that I can press, I can press um, A 
and then type in an angle, and it will lock it to that angle. So no matter where I move the mouse, it will lock it down. Um, I can press it and press D. And oh, D again, type a number in. It helps if I type a right number in. Okay, I didn't do it right, but anyway. That's the point, is you can, you can set parameters whilst you're moving and it will, and it will respect that. And the, the, the drawing tool is exact, exactly the same. Um, I should say as well, that all applies to the move tool as well. So the move tool, if you're trying to move a feature, is also click, click instead of click and hold and drag. Hey, Andrew, can you give us a like, five minute warning when we're getting close to time? We've got five minutes. All right. <laughs> In case you don't know Nathan and me, we, we'll talk all day about Q. Just like, you, you've got to stop us because I've always been. Um, all right, I'll talk real quick, super quick. Project compatibility. So uh, if you're trying to load up really old projects, Certain things, we've looked through the code and we've decided, look, that is so old. If somebody's trying to load a project from 1.9, it's not going to look the same anymore. Um, that affects things like, so if you try and load a project from, the, from less than version 2, I don't know if anyone here is going to hit this situation, but if, if you actually go all the way back there, there was this really old kind of labelling system where it didn't have any collision detection and it was just put a label right on top of the feature. If your projects were using that, there's a chance that you had a project from 1.9, you've been using it all throughout 2. Point whatever. Um, you would have actually seen this labels deprecated tab come up and that was kind of kept for compatibility. That's gone, so your 1.9 projects are now broken if you load them in 3.0. Um, <laughs> there's a few other things like that, really old stuff that has basically been pulled off over time um, and we've made a cutoff to say, okay, we're no longer supporting projects that are older than say 2.2 with that feature. Uh, the, the really easy solution is just make sure you bump your projects up if you, if you go and you, for some reason, need to load a project from six years ago, load it into 2.18 first and then save it and then load it into 3.0 and you'll make sure that it'll, it'll translate nicer. Um, uh, I'll skip this one. I just want to say processing has had a lot of work as well. So uh, I'll be the first to admit in, in version 2.18, processing, a little bit flaky, a bit hit or miss in terms of the, the results you'd get out of it when you run different algorithms. Um, it's had the whole back end ripped apart, rewritten, redone from scratch. Um, as part of that, some of the, the sort of core features that came with 2.18 have actually been removed and will be moved to plugins. So that affects things like uh, there was a, a Tor dem, a, like a um, flood analysis sort of toolkit. Uh, LAS tools are, plug are things that were packaged with 2.18. They didn't work unless you actually had third party software that you'd installed and set up as well. Um, they have been removed from that default install, and the people who are actually responsible for those programs will take over maintenance, and they'll go to the plugin repository. So if you load it up, and you're used to seeing Tor them in there, or LAS tools, you actually need to go to the plugins and first off set up those third party dependencies, and then enable the plugin. Um, here's some extra features. A thing that really bugs me in, in version 2.18, if I want to say clip a layer against another layer and they're in two different coordinate systems, it's a pain because you've got to reproject one of them into the same coordinate system as the other or you get no result at all. Uh, the wonderful thing is in 3.0 it does that behind the scenes. So you can just take your layer that's in GDA 94 against your zone 56 one, clip it and it works perfectly. Um, aside from that, we've, there's been thousands and thousands of improvements to these algorithms, so things that used to take you know, maybe hours might go in a couple of seconds now. Um, and I'm not actually, I'm not exaggerating that. That's, that's the sort of uh, improvements that have gone on behind the scenes. The bad news, sorry, is that any models you've made in processing in version two point whatever, they won't pull across to version three. They need to be rebuilt. Um, the reason for that is uh, over time, that list of algorithms that are available in 2.18 had become really messy and there was a lot of overlap and not really much structure to them. So for instance, there was two algorithms to make grids. There was sort of multiple ones that did the same thing. They all, all did a little bit of it, but not quite everything. They've all been kind of pulled together and uh, consolidated a lot. But the, the bad news is that there was no way for us to automatically say, this directly matches to this, so we can automatically upgrade. It means it's a manual process. You've got to have 2.18, you load your model, and you rebuild it in 3.0. Sorry. Should we just skip? Yeah, just go to the... Oh, I'll just mention it quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick, quick one. There's no, nothing visual here. Some UI consistency. Um, a lot of the 2.18 was sort of bits and pieces. Weren't, they weren't consistent. There was icons used, add, different add icons used, different delete icons used, things like that. So 
Uh, part of the effort is also, given we've got longer time, we can sort of see the patterns evolve as we go on. Um, there's, you know, a standard authorization dialogue that's used now through all the, all the connection dialogues. Um, transparency and opacity have now changed just opacity. Yeah, it was a, it was yeah. a mix before, so yeah. sometimes in labeling it will be transparency and it will be like, if you drag it left it disappears and if you drag it right it's full, but then in symbols it was the other way around. Yeah. That is all too confusing. That's and too so. uh, rotation and scale and there's also zoom layering has also been swapped around to match because labeling was opposite to how um, layers zoom layering worked, which is just drove drive us insane. So and we couldn't break it in two, so we broke it in, in three. And that consistency is important. <laughs> go through it? Yeah, go through it. Okay, quickly. We, went, we said we said we wouldn't do any new features, but this, these don't do deserve those new features. So uh, quite a large one is uh, multi-canvas support. Uh, so if you go in three, it can go up to view, or not save, view, uh, new map, map view. So it gives you that. Map views are based on th themes of layers, so I don't really have any other um, layers loaded here, but I could load a couple of different layers, save a theme, and then show that theme in this, in this view. Um, you can open up multiple map views, and you can dock them on the side, and they're all, in, they're all independent of each other. Um, you can sync them to the main canvas, so as you pan around, they all pan around. You can have an aerial in one, and uh, um, the road in one, and a property in the other, and you can pan around, they all keep in sync. Brought to you by Nile. Um, 3D is another quite large feature. Um, that was that was a crowd that was a funded effort from the actual QGIS project based on funds that we've got. Um, I don't have a what the, no picture. <laughs> Gah. Hold on. We're using an old version of the presentation. That's missing the screenshots. Noob mistake. Desktop. Where is it? Hold on. Price two minutes. It's <laughs> <laughs> the bonus round. Exactly. <laughs> Where are my pictures? Ah, it's all right. I'll show you. Trust me, there's 3D there. <laughs> I think I deleted the wrong presentation. <laughs> anyway, 3D. Um, and a search bar. This is the locator, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. So the locator is down this corner. Down in this corner here. Down there. If you press Control K, it will take you down to that uh, locator. You can search for actions, you can search for layers. Um, there's prefixes you can put in. So dot will give you all the actions. If I hit dot and type space, um, you know, I could type new and it gives me new project, basically. Um, that can also be extended with plugins, so you can wire up um, attribute, ser attribute searches wired up in there. Um, OSM search, all that sort of stuff can be yeah. wired up into there. So Sorry. plugins will take over and basically add things like uh, local address searches and that sort of stuff. Um, if you've got um, even like in-house geocoders, you could, you could hook them up in there or whatever, so you can just press Control-K and then type it and get straight to an area of interest. Um. Yep. How does that work with like a quick finder concept? Like you yeah, quick finder. All those, all those, those multiple projects, uh, plugins that were adding their own little bars, yeah. they're all getting pulled into that one. So no. quick, quick finder's already been done, um, yeah. and so it means that it's up to you which ones you want to install on there. There's a, there's a bunch of default ones that, that Nathan showed, like the, the processing algorithms and the, um, the layers searches and the feature searches. Yep. But then things like Quick Finder, where it searches OpenStreetMap or, um, or you know, what are the nomads and all this sort of stuff, um, they'll all move down to there as well. So you can basically go Control K, type in the address, and uh, whatever plugins you've got, take over. So there you go. 3D. So I didn't want to live demo that, it's a bit risky. Um, but that's um, from Perth, um, it's South Perth, I'm pretty sure. So the build, they're building the layers um, extruded out and you get point layers for the trees with actual 3D models and a point layer for the buildings with a 3D model put in for it. Um, it also supports 3D uh, Z values on points, so it'll actually show them actually floating. Um, that's an evolving feature, so if it, when it releases in 3, don't expect it to do everything. We we'll, we'll evolve it and um, yeah. if you've got 3D data, throw it at it and hopefully get as much fix as I can, well, Martin will. That, that works in a similar way as that multi-canvas, so you go uh, view, yep. view 3D view, and it gives you a little window you can drag around, you can have a hundred of them if you want, um, all showing different 3D things of, of data. Yep, so it's up here in view, 3D view, which there's no data, so I'm not going to do it, but, yep. Um, where's that presentation? 
Yeah, yeah, and I was just going to say, plus thousand, because there's, yeah. there's also, if you look through the change log when it comes out, there's literally been probably a, a thousand other new features that we won't even talk about today um, that might inflate your, that might revolutionise your Cubus workflow, because, because there's a lot of really cool stuff that's coming away. <laughs> You've used your question time. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. No bugs. All features. Like one job to keep it on time. <laughs> and work out this blind. Um, right, is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, it has yeah. to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, we've got Daniel Smith.